Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. O my Lord, expand from me my chest, ease my task with me and remove the impediment from my speech. So they may understand what I say. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuh. Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah. Wa man yudhili allahu falahadiya lah. Wa ashadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wa adhu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Amma ba'd. Verily all praises for Allah. We praise him and seek his aid. And whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is his slave and messenger to proceed. I love to begin um, all my sessions. Girls, you can hear me, right? Yes, inshallah. Yep. Okay, inshallah. If there's any problem with the sound, do let me know. <clears throat> okay, so I'd like, I always like to begin um, with this reminder that why we are here, well, like, why have we gathered here together in the, in the session, what our intentions are? And collectively, to remind ourselves that we are here for the sake of Allah. That however we intend and whatever we intend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us according to that. Every action is judged by intention. And so, inshallah, as we begin this session for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain reward and to make a change within ourselves, to learn something that can help us to make a change, in that, we have this opportunity, alhamdulillah, that we can also fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to seek knowledge. Talab al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. The acquisition of knowledge is a part upon every muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfushim. Surely Allah does not change the condition of a people unless they change what is within themselves. And we need to, girls, really take that in our focus in why we're in the sessions. Because the three C's that I want to talk about today, which I found is very effective if you, in, reflection, in reflective work, is choice, change, and control. If I ask you girls a question, <clears throat> can we control other people? Can we control other people? No, we can't. There can be an element called force, right? But that's still not controlling, that's forcing. They are not willing to be part of that, whatever we are forcing them into, whatever we are trying to enforce upon them. You cannot control others. Can we forcibly change someone if they don't want to change? Can we force someone to make a choice if they don't want to? And subhanAllah, we all had the answer, no. We can influence, we can signpost, we can help them to make a choice. We can help them to change, but we cannot control anyone. The only control we have is of ourselves. S 
And that control is also limited. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ultimate control, right? And so we need to look at ourselves, our lives, as such that <clears throat> if there is a problem that we're having, if we are suffering, if we're in pain, we need to look within. Because that's the only place that we can make a change. Because we have a choice to live in suffering or to come out of it. Why? Going back to the Quranic ayah right at the beginning, we spoke um, mentioned Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change what is within themselves. And sometimes we go through life and we want things to be the way we want it to be. Because we have made plans for our lives. And then we go into despair. We really suffer some form of unhappiness, unrest. We can't find that peace in our minds because life isn't the way we imagined. Things are not going the way we wanted it to. You woke up this morning and you made a plan. You're going to do X, Y, and Z. And then it didn't go according to your plan. But sometimes we can't control certain things. So we need to change our mindset. We need to really accept that things don't happen the way we always wanted to, but we always have control over our mind that are we going to accept that it didn't happen the way I wanted to and embrace that and be okay? Because we are always, we are always okay, girls. We are always okay because we have Allah. We are always okay because we know how to deal with life, because Allah SWT tells us and shows us how to. So we have to purposely change yourself, change ourselves. Just because something didn't go the way we planned, it's not within our control. How many of us go through, like for example, we wanted to be there someone somewhere at seven o'clock. And because there was traffic, we got there at 10 past seven. Is that within our control? You left 20 minutes in advance, right? You left way in advance. I'm going to be there 10 to seven. But subhanAllah, you cannot control everything. And sometimes when we think that we want to do something a certain way and our mindset is so fixed, we fall into despair. But we must try. Like for example, sometimes we procrastinate, don't we? And then what happens is, and these are neg negative things I'm coming to girls. Like we procrastinate that, you know, I need to cook by lunchtime. And I don't manage to because I was procrastinating. I was doing something else. And suddenly I remembered, oops, lunchtime. And then you're beating yourself up over it. Now I can't control time. It's gone now. And now I'm, what I'm doing is I'm rushing around, preparing lunch and beating myself up. We have that choice whether to procrastinate or not. And we have the cho choice and the opportunity always to change ourselves. But what has passed has passed, it's gone. But we can always change our mindset for the future. And that's what we want to bring the three C's in. Look, look at your, your inner struggle. Look within. Take yourself to a moment in your life where you're struggling with something that happened. 
were you in control? Could you have changed that situation? What choices did you have? With Allah subhanahu wa gave us always a choice. Sometimes do we make the wrong choices because we are afraid that it's not going to come, that the outcome will not be the way we want it to. Do we stop ourselves? Do we stop ourselves from success because we are afraid that things are not going to be the way we plan? If that's the case, girls, are we in control or is Allah SWT in control? We always have a choice to make a decision. Tie your camel and leave it with Allah. It might not come out the way we wanted it to, but at least we are not staying in one position. We're not staying in that same point. We are always progressing. We will learn from our mistakes. We will learn from our struggles. But if I don't make that step for change, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make that change for me. So we have a responsibility. As Muslims, we have a responsibility. We have been taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our deen that we are people of accountability. We are people who have responsibilities. And in our responsibilities, we also have to have the best of manners the best of characters, just like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just like the Sahabi Radhi They changed themselves. They went from being like literally Bedouins to leaders over a short period of time because they made changes. They Put, they took themselves from being ig ignorant to, to being extremely learned people because they changed the beliefs. They changed the thinking pattern. They changed. So what changed was the belief that they had in the last Parantala, in what they were capable of or what they were doing. Major changes, girls. Major mindset shift. Who would have thought those people who were, who were fighting within themselves for thousands of years would turn around and build civilizations, functioning, thriving civilizations. They would be leading the whole entire world at one time. because they made choices. They made changes in their lives. And they had self-control. And Surah Fatiha, it begins with gratitude to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a mother of the Quran. I'm not going to go over the tafsir of Surah Fatiha, but I want you to understand what the mother of the Quran starts with Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gratitude. 
to be grateful in our salah every single day, five times a day, in every rakat, we are saying, Alhamdulillah. A point to reflect, girls. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help? Well, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help, helping us through this, but why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us Surah Fatiha, the mother of the Quran, the central point, the blood, literally the blood flow that goes through, the, you know, the mother's connected to the womb. You cannot have to understand it. it's really deep rooted. It's so important to us. Starting with gratitude. We have to really believe that we have a lot to be grateful for, even if we can't see it. Even if we don't can't understand what's going on. We have a choice to intentionally think and believe. We have so much to be grateful for. So girls, what I see, what are you seeing in what I'm saying today now? Anyone want to share? Anyone want to unmute yourself? Okay, I'll take you girls to break that room. Okay, Salma, do you, do you want to share something? Yes, yeah, Salma, um, no, I was just trying to take, <laughs> start a conversation going. But, um, yeah, I think it's a beautiful topic and relating everything back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that we don't have to be in total control all of the time is essential because I think a lot of us women have that as well. We tend to think, that we have to be in control of certain situations because it's our responsibility. Yes, it is to an extent, but yeah. end of day, like you said, Allah is the ultimate provider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate responsible one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's the carer. Um, so I think just have just letting ourselves limit down to exactly what we are which is imperfect human beings and just being happy with that and being able to adjust as and when uh, required. And I think that's really, really important. And it's a really, really good reminder. Um, and then we do tend to forget day to day. Yes, very true. Very true. And that is, that is a concept that we need to build within ourselves, that the belief that we are not perfect, but we are perfectly imperfect. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. The most perfect one has created us. So he knows how we are. He knows me. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's also our responsibility to um, look deeper into our, ourselves and build our, build our intentions to exactly what we do and why we do it not just to go on autopilot and think, okay, I've got to wake up at this time. I've got to do this for the kids. I've got to be at work at this time. There is something else beyond that. And to look for that and to feel that is so, so important. Um, I had a client not long ago, actually, and she used to say that my life is on autopilot. And I think I mentioned this the other day as well. Mm -hmm. And she got to a point where Everything she was doing, she was doing without feeling, if that makes sense. So not yeah. actually appreciating everything that's around her. 
um, and she was doing it just for, just for the sake of doing it. Uh, like even going to work, she was um, driving to work, but then she'd have a thousand thoughts in her head. And then she'd go into a trance while driving. Oh, subhanAllah. And I was like, subhanAllah, that is so dangerous. But not acknowledging our feelings and not acknowledging us as human beings and treating ourselves as machines, I think that's the biggest uh, downfall for us. That's a lack we are of human beings. Absolutely, absolutely, 100%. And the thing I is, think... we have control of our mind, how we think. We can control our thoughts. We can stop. We, we can. can. We can mm. limit our thoughts because the more we're going to think, yeah. remember, where does was was come? Yeah, absolutely. Mind. So if we're going to let it go wild, it's going to go wild. So we have the choice to mm. make that change ourselves. Just because a thought comes to our mind, I don't need to give it um, room. <laughs> no, yeah, room, but I don't really need to give it that ability to grow right? Whatever you focus on grows. So everything that I've got to, I've got to work on me because I am the number one and I will be accountable for me. So whatever I'm doing, right? Because as, as believers, we have been given, and this is what it is, it goes back to our beliefs. Whatever you think about, whatever you think about so much, focus on so much, becomes a belief. And those beliefs are not necessarily true. So we need to change those beliefs that we have created, which are not true. And that goes back to our self-esteem, self-worth. We are always okay. But we don't believe that because we've created in our minds thoughts, which we have given so much focus to. Like that sister that um, you were talking about, sis. So can I take you girls to the breakout room for about 10 minutes? Um, if anyone can't go to the breakout room, please let me know and um, you, you can come back to, or you can just listen, inshallah. I can't hear anything either. Oh, sorry, girls. I was muted. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize I was muted. Sorry, Stafila. Um, okay, girls. Who would like to share a reflection on the choices that we have, the changes that we we can make for ourselves, and the things that we can control? And I had um, some of the girls had amazing reflection in the breakout room. So who would like to go first? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I was sharing in our breakout room how we were just talking generally what you were saying earlier that a lot of, of us are on autopilot. We're not mindful. We don't have kushal in our salah and we're just busy with hectic everyday life. Mm -hmm. Um, with busy family, in-laws, children, work, college, school, whatever our situation is, <clears throat> and the pandemic and certain world affairs recently have tried to teach us to calm down, to slow down, 
and it's a big practice now in the well-being sector to be mindful to meditate but we've got it in our tradition to have a kushul which is the consciousness of Allah focus of Allah the taqwa of Allah in our salah and the dhikr to remember him so some of the girls in our group were sharing tips on how to incorporate that in our lives such as doing the kid in the car whilst we're taking the children for the school run listen mm -hmm. to recitation to calm us down breathing exercises as well mm, mashallah, yeah. and i also shared the fact that last year i was diagnosed very randomly with mm, breast cancer and initially it was like the rug has been taken under my feet and i did i've got two young children so it was in a very compromised position and I live far away from my own family and friends. So we live in a small island and uh, it, we just, it was just myself and my husband and our two, three-year-old, uh, I think she was two at the time and a six-year-old. And then after we managed um, to get through six months worth of chemotherapy and mastectomy, then radiotherapy and the oncologist and the specialist had said that it was one of the largest tumours that they had ever seen. However, the fact that um, when I made a choice uh, to change the situation and reflect on the positivity, that is a test from Allah and reflected back on our traditions and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how they were tested with ill health, um, namely Ayyub Alaihi Wasallam, how he had perfect health and he had a severe illness and he had a lot of wealth and he lost all his wealth and he had children and he lost his children but and the people were mocking him but then after he um stayed strong to his belief and he didn't complain and he, there was a special dua that he recited like Allah um something has befalled me if you choose to take it away so he wasn't complaining he wasn't moaning he wasn't saying it's a negative thing yeah. and to his patients so if I look and test them, then who are you and I not to be tested through COVID or our daily day tri tri trials and tribulations? Yeah, subhanAllah. That is yeah. amazing, sis. So when I was doing my breathing exercises, where I had to hold my breath during my radiotherapy, I was conscious to try and learn more surahs and du'as and reciting la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al mean when I breath breathed in and I had to course when I breathed out and as I said, the specialist was just like so surprised and so amazed at how effective uh, the treatment took to me because a lot of people, it doesn't always work uh, like the chemotherapy and Alhamdulillah, I didn't have much side effects or anything and I was still able to continue my daily life and working and everything, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. But I still got a journey to go, so please make that for me, but generally still up and about. Alhamdulillah, see the choice that you had, you made to change your mindset to being from negativity, like this is what, what you're saying is they've, the biggest tumour that they've seen, I mean, that would shake anyone, you know. But At the time, I didn't realise it was. <laughs> I think I was on autopilot, I was just in survival mode. So it was afterwards, nothing was actually registering in my brain. So when they were talking about it all, the medical terms, I chose I chose not to dwell into it and look at the statistics or go into the Google rabbit hole of researching this, researching that, or seeing negativity or speaking to other people's stories. So it was my own journey, my own test. I limited the people that I shared it with anyway. And I didn't even share it with my own mum because she was in the UK and I didn't want to stress her out and worry her. And because it was COVID, no one could come and do or say anything anyway. So uh, I just had, had a small non-Muslim network here. And then we did it in a spiritual way and prayers and dwells. And yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Look where you are now. And you're sharing this story with all of us, which is, you know, really going to help. I'm sure a lot of the sisters out there with the struggles that we have, that the struggles that we have, they are real and everyone's struggle is difficult. It is hard, no matter how small or big um, we think. It's all relative and Allah does not yeah. test any more than they can yeah. uh, burden, uh, deal with. And I think uh, it's real at that time. And the brain is so powerful and it makes us more resilient. 
and you can do do it. There's other people that have got other struggles that I wouldn't be able to deal with. A lot of my friends are going through the ill, like children being ill or doing that, but that's their test, and I'm at all of them. And I'm sure all of the girls will be making du'as. And there, is, there are some du'as already for you, subhanAllah. And really, really, um, we sincerely make du'as for you. And mashallah, your resilience, your strength really sh shines through. Remember, because you understood, this is about going back to that, we never had control over our health. We, but you had the ability to make that choice, to change your mindset to change your mindset to a positivity, to take yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like um, some of the girls mentioned in that group that, you know, school run, very difficult, um, things that we do in autopilot mode, take yourself out of autopilot mode and remember, put the intention that we're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The couple as well. Because it's a form of worship, everyday, daily life, taking yeah. the children, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning, all that is just, it can be worship if we have the right intention. Exactly. Even this call that we're doing, it's all by the kind, it's all added to our scale of good deeds. Exactly. And fulfilling our duties to our partners, our husbands, our in-laws, our family, and our jobs. And may Allah accept that from us. Amen. Amen. All of Jazakallah, what am I saying? Jazakallah khairan, Liza. Um, Jazakallah khairan. Anyone else wants to share? Assalamu alaikum. I had a lovely chat with um, just, uh, Sister Sister Meme, I think, um, uh, was the one I chat with. Um, and she, we were talking about how we can we can really get caught up in our thoughts and fall into despair and like in the moment it's really hard and she's talking about you know it's really hard to get out of that rut and we we talked about how you know there's a choice and we can choose to accept a thought and we can choose to accept a feeling but we can choose to also reject it mm -hmm. and how that can be quite empowering and and how sometimes like something as simple as journaling can be really effective like a believe you know a successful believer is one that believes and takes action so just like we talked about salah for example breaking up with the journey and how sometimes you know you you know sometimes you, you miss it and then you miss it a few times you start thinking you're a bad muslim and you fall into that rut and then it permeates into other areas of your life and how yeah it shaitan's but it, when you're in that thought it's really hard to pull yourself out of it um but then you also know, like if it, you know that, you, you know, Allah wouldn't give you the command of Salah if you didn't think you can copy, despite the fact, you know, you might be ill or you have kids or, or whatnot. Um, then so how do you go overcome it? And, and then you look at each. So I, I, one of the things we talked about is like rejecting the thoughts, like I'm a bad Muslim. Are you a bad Muslim? Is that an opinion? Or are you always going to be a bad Muslim? Things like that, that you know, take you to despair. You can reject that. I missed Fajr. That's a fact. So then what can you do about it? You know, set the alarm on earlier. If your phone is just, you're scrolling on the phone at night, you know, shut, you know, you can put lockdown on your phone as well. There's ways of doing it. You can put your phone. I even told a client to put her phone in another room and put an alarm clock for her bedside. It's as simple as that. But you take action. And I'm just giving a, just an example, but you can choose and re reject those thoughts. Yes. And, and then focus on what is fact. Yeah, you fact, fact is you missed Fajr or fact is you did something wrong. You can apologize. You know, you seek forgiveness from Allah. Allah is the most merciful, you know. Um, and, you know and that was something that we thought that we, it was really like that choice. We didn't even go into changing control. We just focused on the choice. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that in itself can be quite empowering. SubhanAllah, that is it's really, just one point, right? I know I put them all three, three together. The reason why I put three together is because when I'm dealing with something with my clients, I find that all three of them are interchangeable. They are interconnected. Like, for example, um, what, one, one scenario, like, for example, 
you're unwell, that's not within your control. So we have a choice. Do I rest or do I stress about it so much and I'm pushing myself and I'm not letting myself recover? I have a choice whether how I behave now, you know, whether I change my condition. I have a choice to rest or not to rest. And if I'm not going to give my body what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously Allah subhanahu wa giving you the illness, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you need to do now. We can make certain changes, we can, but sometimes we choose just to go on autopilot mode and go like, no, I have to continue. But we need to slow down. And just like COVID showed us, you know, those 18 months or more that we've had COVID has really showed us that we don't have control, but we have the ability to change. There's so much that we can learn and we can change within ourselves. That we don't have to blame ourselves continuously for everything that's happened in the past or fear what's gonna happen in the future because that's not within our control. That's not even real. It's not a reality. Because it hasn't happened, the future. And the past has already happened, it's gone. We can't really go back to it, we can't change it. We can't control anything there. But we live in the present moment and we can do so much with what we have right now. And we have that choice. And sometimes guilt, I mean, everything in moderation is good. But when we take it to excess and we're overthinking it, that's when we have exceeded what is good what is right within ourselves. So if you're feeling bad about something, take it to Allah. What would Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do in that um, instance? What would Sahabi Radul Alam do? Like for example, when we're thinking, like Sister Roshana said, like when we're thinking and we're thinking that we've, we've got really bad thought and that thought is going around in our head, it's like something that you don't want to even speak about because a lot of the time, we go, you know, we are human, we have gospels, we have thinking, and thoughts will come. And there's a hadith of um, Abu Huraira that some of the companions came to the Prophet and they asked him, we find within ourselves that which is so grievous to speak of. So they're talking about the mind, that they find that they are thinking things which are so bad that they, will, they cannot speak it out loud. <clears throat> and so what did the Prophet say? The Prophet said, you have indeed found, have you, you have indeed found it so, meaning, like, is it true? Do you really think like this? Or do you, do you have these thoughts? And they said, yes. And the Prophet replied to that. This, that is sincere faith. That you have sincere faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why these thoughts are grieving you. These thoughts are coming to you, but you do not speak of it. You negate it. You let it go. So pure, when we have faith, shaitan will attack us more. And we have the ability, girls, the power, the ultimate power of choice to change that thought and not focus on it. Let it go, push it out and reinforce the belief in Allah. Even if that thought takes us to thinking bad of Allah, take it away. Bring back the good thoughts of Allah. Allah is Ar-Rahman, Allah is Ar-Rahim. Focus, change. Because thoughts will come. That's not within our control. Waswas will come. We will have friends and family who will say things. That's not within our control. But we have a choice of how we deal with it. We have a choice of the, our attitude. If somebody was rude to Nabi Sallallahu his attitude was of the best. He had the best of character. He didn't go to their level but he had his boundaries.
Anyone else wants to add to that, girls, before we end the session? Anyone else? Okay, inshallah. So we'll end the session here with a dua. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته